Good morning. Good afternoon. Good evening. Wherever you are on this amazing, complex planet of ours. Yes, it is complex. It is. I'm Ariel. And I'm Shia, and it is amazing. What's amazing? Well, and this universe, as far as we know, this is the only place that has cognitive life, as far as we know. But, you know, we only know what we know. And we only know what we don't know. I mean, know what we don't know. We know that we don't know certain things. Correct. And then there's this universe that's huge, light, light, thousands, millions of light years. That's the distance light travels in a year. Light travels what? 186 million miles per second. Oh man, that's very big. And uh, this is where your life is taking place. Cool. I think it's cool. Mm -hmm. And I don't think it's anything worth getting upset over. What? That to waste the experience of living in upset and anger. Ah, which brings us to today's theme for being here. Family. <clears throat> A master class in listening. Because I actually think, you know, when you say... Uh, upset and anger, particularly around this time of year, I know it gets heightened that a lot of people have certain folks in their lives that they are holding grudges against, that they're angry with, that they're being right about. That they think should be different than they are. Today is an opportunity to truly listen and see what is possible? You know, when you said, you know what you know, you know what you don't know. Like, I you know, know yeah. I didn't know the statistics for how fast light moves. Uh -huh. But then there's all sorts of things that have never occurred to me. Uh, well, if I wasn't at one time told the speed of light, mm -hmm. I wouldn't know that but it's something I learned. I don't even know if that's accurate, but I, you know, you function off of what you believe is accurate. Mm -hmm. uh, and sometimes you discover something that you've been holding as true is not, you know, there, yeah, I, I grew up in a time when beef was considered bad mm -hmm. and chicken was considered good. Mm -hmm. And pork was somewhere in between. And that may still be that way. I don't know. But there's high carbohydrate, low fat, low protein diet. Then it goes the other way where they're saying a high fat, high protein diet is better for you than a high carbohydrate diet. Hey. So where, where do you find the truth in, in all the information you get? Well, maybe... Your experience of living gives you a truth that your intellect does not. Because, you know, we've all been downloaded with programs about reality. Mm -hmm. You know, like if you are raised in a religious family, then religion is prime in your experience of living. Uh, if you are raised in a family that considered itself to be agnostic or uh, atheistic, uh, well, then that wasn't one of the things they talked about. Actually, it might have been one of the things they talked about in their resistance to religion, you know. But uh, discovering your life only requires your being in the current moment of your life. But you've got so much internal conversation going on that's old stuff that's been completely rehashed and, and talked about over and over every day, you know, you talk about the same things like me talking about all the same things you talk about every day. <laughs> you know, today's episode is family, a master class in listening. <clears throat> and uh, the description we put together is ever think you know what your family members are going to say in any given situation? Ever silently complain, oh, no, here they go again. And on this timely episode of being here, unwrap the best 
gift of the season, your ability to truly listen and cherish those you love, including yourself. And we put together this particular description some time ago and now we're recording it. And by the time it's released, you'll be listening to it. And I realize that when you're not cherishing yourself, you have very little space for those you quote love, particularly family, Mm. because they are the closest related to you. You have in general, the most history with them and you're most likely to deeply judge them because most of us deeply judge ourselves. Correct. In case you don't know, Shai and I finish each other's sentences. So I really appreciate you finishing that sentence. Oh, thank for me. you, because it was so obviously the reality. We have a guest. Let's take her. We're not. Where are you calling, zooming in from? Hey, Ariel and Shaya. Hey, Renat. How you doing? I'm good, thank you. My 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 speech or my voice is a little bit deeper than usual. I I catch the cold, but I'm good, thanks. <laughs> Where are you are zooming you? in from, honey? I'm zooming in from from Switzerland, Büserach, Biesrach. Biesrach. Yes. Mm. Mm. Welcome to being here. Thank you. It just touched me what you you guys said and. Especially that you said when I'm not kind with myself that I don't have a lot of capacity to be kind to my surroundings. And it was it was funny. I, I read the description from today's episode and I realized when I read family, like my uh, head or my I go automatically to my parents and siblings. Mm-hmm. But not to my husband and daughter. It's just, just like the f- word family triggers me much more to, um, yes, to to my original family than to my now family. I find that find that quite interesting because when you talk about listening every family, um, then I think, oh yeah, I could really listen to my husband and daughter because sometimes in in daily life it just <coughs> it's not that in front or it's just like daily life is happening <laughs> so i'm really um i really got ex- uh, inspired to really to really listen to them to really you know, it's interesting uh i what you said, I got inspired to really listen to them. Uh, let's look at the three principles of instantaneous transformation for a moment, Renat. And I'm going to start with the second one, or the third one, actually, which we almost never start there. But the third one is anything you see, or, or in this case, perhaps here, without judging, completes itself in an instant. So here you saw that you, when you hear the word family, you tend to think of your nuclear family, that you, your parents, your siblings, and then you realize family extends to your husband, your daughter, and that in day-to-day life, you sometimes just forget to listen. You're not hearing things. You're just busy preparing a meal, for instance, or doing the laundry or, you know, making sure that bath time happens or whatever it is that is happening in your house. And so if you see that without judging, it's over. You have now the capacity to hear them. If you make yourself wrong for what you didn't see a moment ago. And then you say, I will now do better. I'm going to listen to them tonight. That's the first principle in disguise. Anything you see and judge, you intensify. It repeats. It dominates your life. Anything you resist, don't like, or judge, 
um, grow stronger and dominate your life. So it's very cool if you can see something and not judge it. But you know, I have an example of that. Please. <clears throat> I was up during the night looking on Google for a different fish finder for my new little boat <laughs> because it doesn't seem to work except when it does. And what I found up there was pretty much exactly what I have right now. Mm. But my my disagreement with that that depth finder is Inter not intermittently, in, working. intermittently <laughs> working has me in the middle of the night thinking about a depth chime, chime finder rather than you know sleeping or whatever. What I am in disagreement with because I want it to work properly seems to be what keeps me up at night. Mm. That's so strange. Mm. I, I had to, to smile when you, when you said that when you make the decision um, that you're going to do it differently. So mm. I, I re realized that that was one part that I said, I'm going to do better <laughs> than it just like, oh, okay, cool. <laughs> You know, better than what? See, it, here's the other thing. The second principle of instantaneous transformation says no two things can occupy you at the same time. Or you can only be exactly as you are in any given moment of now. So if you can't be different than you are, the idea that you are somehow less than perfect is just an idea because you know, perfection is something that's whole or full or complete and lacking nothing. That's a, a definition of perfection. Well, in any given moment, you are whole, you are full, you're complete, and you're lacking nothing. I mean, you may have an idea you ought to be different than you are, but that idea has been there for a very long time. And when you've initiated things to try to make yourself different and have accomplished that, you notice you're still picking on yourself. Yes. <laughs> Funny, isn't it? That. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, you might could take a lighthearted approach to life as if it's perfect. Why not? You know, this isn't quite a an accurate metaphor for this because in being here there really is no destination you're just being here uh but i perhaps because you were talking about the depth finder on mm -hmm. your boat which is a little apparatus that pings down to the bottom and then it pings up and it tells you how deep the water is for instance so that you know you know the depth of the water you're in but if you are on a boat and you're heading to a spot on the horizon and a wake hits from another your boat, boat from another boat hits you you might just go just a titch off center and then the farther you go whilst being off center from that point the wider and wider and wider and farther away from your initial path you get and if you see, oh, look, I've been knocked off center, and you just adjust slightly, you're suddenly back. And you, it's easy to just float right back in line. But when I was first learning boats and steering, if I saw myself off kilter, I would overcorrect, over -correct, go to the left. And... If you ever watched a line of our boat, like because it showed the track on the GPS, it was wandering back and forth like a snake. Because I always thought I had to do more or be more or change more. And, you know, just seeing that from time to time you forget to listen, it's like you've already made the adjustment you don't need to add any energy to do that if you do that then you'll do listening until it gets annoying and then you'll say forget this and then you won't listen and then you'll do listening and 
And then it, it really is well, all being it, hard it, on it, you. It's not only do listening, it's do your life according to the rules that you absorbed in your earliest family life of how you're supposed to be, rather than look and see how you feel and what your experience is of living, rather than the dictates of the culture you grew up in. I don't know, you, you grew up in Switzerland, and I imagine the church was very strong in that country. Yes, that's true. And so even though you may not attend church these days, and you may, I don't know, uh, if you do, or if you do not, you think you should, or you think, no, I'm not letting them tell me how to live. I'm not going there anymore. But all of it is fodder <clears throat> for an internal fight of how to be a better or not. Mm -hmm. Yes, that rings true for sure. Yes. And then I, I'm certain you battle with, oh, my goodness. You know, my daughter is really young. How do I bring her up the best? And how much religious background do I give her? And how do I give her the, the foundation that's important to me? And I include all the things I found. I, I, I'll and, tell you, don't worry about it. She's going to raise herself anyway. <laughs> <laughs> just like you did yeah yeah your parents not told you not to do certain things and you went and did them yes that's true or they told you to do certain things and you didn't do them yeah for sure also <laughs> yeah and it turned out mm -hmm. now you may have the idea you haven't turned out yet either hmm you're still of an age uh, that you think you ought to be different than you are. What more progress to be made? Yes, more progress to be made. <laughs> yes, that's spot on. <laughs> well, maybe you can relax mm -hmm. and allow yourself to be okay being the way you are right now. You know, if you can, the, the higher probability that you'll be able to relax and let your family be okay being the way they are. Mm -hmm. But if you're agitated, you'll find something to blame that agitation on, and usually it's the circumstances of our lives that we blame the agitation on. Mm -hmm. Thanks. You know, I, one other thing in regards to listening in particular to family is... In change, there's good, bad, right, wrong, better, worse. There's the dichotomies of life. In a transformational perspective, it doesn't, it's like every moment is a piece of how you see. So it's not like, it's easy now to go, okay, holidays are coming. I'm going to listen to my family, which is, a decision that is based in a reaction against yourself. It's a resistance. But also you forget when you go out holiday shopping, for instance, that each person who appears in your space is an opportunity to listen. It's like a... Uh, uh, if I take a picture of you and I cut it in half, it's two dimensional, I'll have half a Renat. In a holographic version, a three dimensional, I, I cut it in half and I get you just a half as intense. intense a picture. So when you're with the person in the shopping uh, market or letting the person pull out with their car in front of you, all of the things that you do might just be a little less intense version of how you treat yourself when you're around your family because they're the basics. So you don't have to wait. <laughs> that sounds good. Uh, and I wouldn't make decisions about how you're going to be when you speak to them or see them. 
And I would wait and see who's there and interact with that person as though you don't know them already. Because you see, when you think you already know them, you don't see them, you see what you know. I'm quite excited now to <laughs> meet my family again. <laughs> That's great. Thank nice. you. Nice. That's great. Thanks for being with us today. Yes. Thank you very much. Hey, you want to hear about transformation? Mm -hmm. We've got one of our listeners about to tell you about what's happened in their life out of listening to being here. Mm. Hi, I'm Jutta from Hardemsdorf in Germany. And with transformation, I experienced that new possibilities are there everywhere in the world. And uh, if I'm just taking them and being open for them, I can relax and feel at ease and everything seems to be easy and peaceful rather than posting a threat against me so I can enjoy my life much more and enjoy every possibility which shows up uh, and I choose to um, go into, go with it. Do you want to have well-being with consistency? Connect with people all over the world from the comfort of your own home at Aaron and Shire's lively interactive Living Made Easy virtual seminars. Join any of their two-hour online events or take a deep dive into the magic of being you at a virtual weekend seminar. Come on, let's connect. Find out more and register at transformationmadeeasy.com. This Saturday and next Monday are the last Living Made Easy two-hour virtual seminars of 2023. So if you're listening to this in real time rather than in the archives, we invite you to either or both. It's a great setup for the rest of the holidays. Again, it's a perfect place to connect in with yourself and practice the skill set of listening. The beginning of the year, we have a Living Made Easy seminar on the theme of transformation in the new year. Both uh, the European time zone and the uh, US time zone, they're both going to be done on Tuesday because Monday is New Year's Day. Mm. So the second uh, January 2nd is a Tuesday. So the first Living Made Easy of 2024 will be, there'll be two of them we'll be doing on the second. So, so midday our time will be the European seminar. And for and the, the evening, evening, we'll do the United States or wherever you happen to tune in from. Uh, the midday one is translated into German to support people like Renat, who whilst she speaks English flawlessly, it, she and her friends also speak German or Swiss German in it. It supports everybody in that community. Uh, the power of listening, oops, New Beginnings is first actually. So uh -huh. New Beginnings is our virtual seminar in uh, January the 6th and 7th. It's a weekend seminar. Uh, we figure why not start with new beginnings, mm. actually starting your world anew. And then the power of listening is our virtual weekend seminar in March on the 2nd and 3rd. You can find out all about our uh, seminars. You can still purchase calendars for 2024 and also as gifts. You can sign up for our newsletter, all of it at transformationmadeeasy.com. Yes. Let's take our next guest. Yes. Susan, where are you? Welcome to being here. Hi, guys. I'm Susan, and I'm Zooming in from Brooklyn, New York. Welcome. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thanks. Pleasure to be here. Um, so I love this topic uh, of the show, family. Um, I have a, a large 
immediate nuclear family. And uh, my husband also has a pretty big family. And we go to a lot of family events and upcoming ones as well. Um, and I, I was thinking of the topic and questions and, and really what struck me was that I act differently when I'm with my siblings than with like my parents and my husband or my husband's family. And there's just, you know, I, I do my best not to, <laughs> to judge, you know, and to drop those judgments about my, my siblings, but I just find that I, I just like lose it. So really my question is around how do I not like, how do I keep that empathy when I'm with my sibling? Oh yeah. I can't tell you. See, so <laughs> you judge them the same way you judge you. So you don't have to wait to figure out how to uh, be with your siblings. Discover it in you in this moment of your life because this is where you are. See, if you weren't picking on you, you wouldn't have to pick on them. It comes from the idea that somehow you aren't enough, therefore anybody related to you can't possibly be enough either. And I think you are normal, that we judge our families as though they're not doing it right because you have an idea of what a true family uh, should be like. The Brady Bunch. Exactly. I couldn't remember the name of one of those things. But I saw it on face. Yes. You watched the Brady Bunch as a kid, right? Yes, definitely. Yep, yep. I didn't. <laughs> but that doesn't mean that I didn't think that my family was a little off the wall. Okay. You know, it, it just well, goes with the territory of comparing your family to other families and you had television and television gave you all kinds of role models that you could compare your family to and you just weren't as cool as they were. So I have a question for you. Ready? Yes. Yes. Uh, you have sisters. I know I have sisters. Uh, do you care how much money my sisters make? No. no. Do you care how clean their living room is? <laughs> no. Do you have a conversation about how they treat their children? No. Nope. Uh, do you judge? Do you even think about uh, them? them? Not really. No. I mean, it never even comes to mind, does it? To think about Ariel's sibling? No, it doesn't. Well, uh, I no. really want to go back to what Shai just said to you because he says things that are so profound frequently. We're kind of like, oh, yeah, I heard that. You, like, you, you hear it, but you don't hear it. It kind of flows over you rather than really hear it. Well, you take out that part of it that you agree or disagree with to look at, but what you, what's outside what you already know is it's non-existent. It doesn't sink in because you don't hear it because you don't have a context in which to hold what's being said. Not that it's that profound. Now, normally... I think people get prepared for us to say something like, look at yourself. You know, if you're not being empathetic with your, your family, look at yourself. You, I, I say the other way around. If you want to know how you've been treating yourself recently, Susan, look at how you're relating to your family. If you have no mm -hmm. empathy for them, you have none for yourself. If you're judging okay. them harshly, you're judging yourself. And I, and I have a feeling that from time to time, if you have tension with your husband, when you go out into the world, you put a good face on it because you don't want people to think badly of you the way you think of you.
if you have tension or if you didn't make your bed or if you have dishes in your sink or you don't know what to do with your day or you're, you know, being, quote, lazy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, that really that hits home in in how I've been feeling uh, like I'm not doing it, quote, doing it the right way. And I recently transitioned into, well, not recent, it, it's been since a couple of months, two months uh, of retirement from my work. And what comes into my mind when you speak of like, you know, doing it right and, and putting on that face is sometimes I don't know what to do with my day. And I think I should already know what to do. And sometimes I'm like, okay, here it is. But there's, there's a, uh, yeah, I, I don't have the answer. And I think I'm stupid for it. Like I should have an answer already. And I don't. That doesn't have to do with that you're not currently working, that you've transitioned into retirement, as you say. I guarantee you, when you were working, there were times where you didn't have the answer, didn't know what to do with had, a project, and you thought you were stupid. I had similar thoughts. Yeah, that's true. That's and very I, true. <laughs> so what did I say that you wanted to go back? To? Well, you were, you were talking, um, I, I think I already de addressed it in reverse. Uh, when I, I said, look at yourself, if you're not having compassion, I mean, look at your, how you're treating your siblings. Well, you look at how you're treating yourself. Yes. Is how you're treating yourself. It has, it, it really doesn't have to do with them. It has to do with the opinion you have about yourself. And if you're normal, your opinion about yourself is less than how you think you ought to be. I mean, if you fully liked yourself, some part of you would think you were arrogant or that you would never <laughs> or that, you know, you would go to heaven or hell if I wasn't, <laughs> if I wasn't perfect now, how am I going to get into heaven? <laughs> Keep well, vigilant. But but here's the thing, Susan. Yes. <laughs> what, what evidence do you have that heaven exists? It told me so in the Bible. <laughs> yeah, okay. I have evidence that heaven exists here when you're being kind to yourself. That's right. And here's another thing. If we're, we're talking faith-based, regardless of the faith, let's say it's about making a difference and, and wanting to, to have a, an impact that is expansive. Tell me, how do you feel when somebody walks into a room that is being hard on themselves as opposed to when somebody walks into the room who's feeling very content. I'm more inclined to be happy to see that person who's content and be around them than the one that's working on themselves. Do you ever find that if somebody's being really harsh, it's like getting the flu, that you're likely to leave being harsh on yourself as well? Ah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. I I tell you the truth. I hadn't seen that. I, I, yeah. Well, I see it often on a living made easy. You have people, and sometimes weeks are turbulent, or you have the illness of a loved one, or you have people have lost their jobs. There's just been a you know you have world situations that you know different pieces of the world are at war or there there are all sorts of big challenges and little challenges and people show up to a living made easy seminar and suddenly just tuning in all that falls away and it's like taking a shower so that you can be kind to yourself in the midst of all the turbulence but if you tuned in and we were like being ah 
I can't believe I just, you know, and we're being hard on ourselves. I suspect everybody would. Well, you know, you, your demonstration of hard on yourself was uh, over the top. Yeah, I can't really. I, you know, I, people can be hard on themselves really quietly. silently, yes, where they're deep in their pensive thoughts about how they could have or should have done their life differently. And if they were really successful, they would be happy by now. Yeah, interesting. We did a weekend seminar not too long ago. Or oh, they're proving they're happy. And there, were, there was somebody who came mm -hmm. who was so determined to hold on to their misery. Yes. And I, I often think that if a person's being hard on themselves, they have to work really hard to hold that. Oh, they do. They have to, hold, to be they, right. But they have to be stuck in an ongoing, repetitive conversation with themselves about how bad they are. But, you know, or how bad life is. There may be family members. You maybe go to holiday things, uh, Susan, and you'll see somebody who's who you love, you appreciate, and they're miserable because they think they, they're they not doing their life well enough. Let's play a game. I know that you uh, and I, of course, we're, it's not possible, but if I if we were playing tug of war, did you ever do it as a kid? Yes. Yep. Yep. When you had people on the other side and you pulled to see who could pull the other one? Yep. Most of us, if we're faced with misery from a family member, we grab the rope and we try to pull them to our perspective. No, life is good. Come on over here. But if you don't pick up the rope, you don't resist their perspective. If you allow it to be in its full perfection, there's a whole other possibility. Well, you know, as you say that, I think about my relationship with my mother-in-law and how recently our, one of Ariel's sisters was visiting us and she was so amazed that I had forgiven her mother's behavior. Mm -hmm. You know, it's interesting. My mom wanted the best for me. Absolutely. And in her perspective, Shia was not the, the optimum choice as a mate. And, and also their personalities, their interests in life were very, very different. I mean, even to fishing, which requires water. And my mom was desperately afraid of water. So there was just, it just, he was not her choice. And there were, there was- She a wasn't, I, I was not her first choice. I was not her second choice. I was not her <laughs> last choice. And, and- you know, ultimately, if they had conflicts over the years, uh, Shai didn't hold a grudge against her. It wasn't like, oh, she did this and she did that. And uh, my sister kept saying, I cannot. And Shai forgave mom for that. And Shai forgave, can't believe she, he forgave her. And I kept saying, yes, he saw how they intersected that he initiated some of her discomfort. He started looking at himself rather than at her. It was so brilliant. My mom loved him so deeply. By the time she did. Yeah. yeah. And it, it required shy of letting go of being right that she was wrong for anything that's cool <sighs> i like seeing your face i know yeah. other people can't see you but you seem very relaxed in yourself right now yeah i i just just listening to you and your insights and it, it just it presents new possibilities of seeing myself and and I what you say rings true inside of me there's just this 
uh, almost like something inside of me says, yeah, that's, that's it. <laughs> Just, and I really, I appreciate it. And, uh, and, and I, well, here's the thing, Susan, your yeah. family cannot be different than they are the same way you can't be different than you are. Even <laughs> if you try to be different, it, trying to be different keeps you the same because you have to resist some idea of how you should be different. You know, you, you have an idea of the way you are is not enough. You should be different. And then you strive for that and it keeps you attached to that idea of your own insignificance or your own uh, insecurity or your own lack of something rather than you're already perfect exactly as you are all you have to do is relate or relax into that being you and then you'll be kind to the people around you too you see if you're kind to yourself in your thoughts you'll be kind to others in your thoughts. But if you pick on you, then it's a natural extension of that, that you'll pick on your sisters. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Ugh. You know, uh, it's moving toward the end of the year, end of 2023. Again, don't know when people will be listening to this, whether it'll be uh, in the archives or live. Uh, we've had formerly the radio show, now this podcast for 16 and a half years. And of that time, you were uh, the producer uh, for a number of years in that. Mm -hmm. And Shai and I thank you for the foundation upon which we are currently standing, which is today's podcast. And we're grateful for everything that you have done to support us uh, in being here today. Mm. Yeah, thank yeah. you. Ah, oh, you're welcome, my pleasure. You know, one last thing about that, it's like you're part of this being here family and maybe family, this master class and listening, maybe family has lots of different meanings and wider meanings and you can allow yourself to connect into the world around you in a, in a wider way. Mm. Yeah. Uh, thanks so much. Yeah, thank thank you. Pleasure. Thank you. Mm. <laughs> Great. You know, it occurs to me that as you're listening to this podcast, if it's touched you, there may be people in your world who it will touch as well. And if that's true, it's easy to share it. Uh, it's also easy to subscribe to this podcast. You can do it on any uh, of the uh, podcast apps. Uh, you can also leave a review on your favorite podcast app. It helps other people find being here. And so if you feel to do it, thank you. Uh, we appreciate you listening today. And next week's episode is... When in doubt... Take a break. We'll be back next week. So come on back and don't miss. Ready, Susan? Go ahead. You take it. Don't miss. Being here. That's right. <laughs> thank you, Susan. Ah, uh, thank you. <laughs>